So in this section, we're gonna talk about your sewing machine. Well, I'm not gonna go into detail on this specific sewing machine itself. Most sewing machines thread similarly. So I'm gonna talk you through the process of loading your thread spool and then winding a bobbin, installing the bobbin, using the correct presser foot, and then installing the needle. So each one of those will be mini little lectures that will give you a little bit more detail on what you should be looking for on your specific machine. Okay, so you will have a power supply cord that you'll need to plug into your machine and then into a wall outlet. And then you will have your uh, foot pedal, which you will press generally with your foot uh, to get the machine to sew. So sometimes these two pieces come together and they're all attached into one and you just have one plug to plug in. This one, it is separate. So you will have to look at your machine to find out where you plug in your power supply. So the power supply is going to go here on the side. So let me just figure this out and I will get that plugged into the machine. And then I'll go ahead and plug this into power. All right, so now I need to plug in the foot pedal. And on a lot of machines, even if they're separate cords, you may have it here also where the power supply is. But on this particular machine, it gets plugged into the back of the machine. And I assume that's so that the presser foot cord can go off the other side of the table. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug this in. Everything will be plugged in here. Make sure it's all snug. And I'm just gonna show you the sewing part. And I have a piece of fabric in here. So you should know that in some of the newer models, especially this one, that it won't sew unless your presser foot is in the down position. I just lifted it up. So I need to put this presser foot down before I sew. And then I need to turn it on. Mm -hmm. The needle will move back into position. And now because the presser foot is down, I can press my presser foot and it will sew. Okay, so that's how it works. Generally you have this on the floor to actually press it with your foot and then guide the fabric with your hands. Now this particular machine won't let me sew with the presser foot up. I will just check that, see? It won't go and then my electronic part gives me an, an error code. But since I don't wanna sew when the presser foot is down, I'll put some fabric in there, put the presser foot down, and then it will sew. So that's basically what you'll need to do for the power. Okay, so let's talk about um, installing the thread. So you may have several different types of spools, one that's like this, or even different sizes of the th same type, or you may even have something that looks like this without a uh, end cap on it. So let's look at the type of thread carrier. So this particular machine has a thread carrier that is clipped in for easy storage. And in this case, I just need to clip it out, pull it out. And then the thread cone would go on here. So you may also have a machine that has a post that stands up here. Here's a, an option I have on given to me by this machine company, which I can stick here. And this is actually the bobbin winder, which we'll get to in a, mi a minute, in which case you can actually just put your thread up there um, if that works better for you. Um, we'll get into more advanced uses of this a little bit later, but if you're using a double needle, which is more advanced, um, you would have two spools and that's what this extra um, spool carrier is for. So when you get your machine, um, Hopefully you will have something like this that looks in looks like this in the uh, package. And this particular machine gave me three. And these are called um, end caps or spool end caps. And they go on the end of your thread carrier. And that's to hold the thread in place um, and to keep it from flying off. So the size of this, I have three different sizes. And you want one that is slightly larger than the end of your spool. So even though this one is larger than this, it's actually better to use this one, which is just slightly larger than the spool. So I'm actually going to put the black, I can slide the black right on here, all the way, 
there and then I want to push this end cap all the way up. I want to make sure that this spool is snug. I don't want it to be able to move around here. If it's moving around here like this when you're sewing, that's going to give you bad tension. So you want to make sure that it is secure in there. And the reason that you want your end cap to be a little bit larger than the, the, the size of the end cap on your thread is because sometimes on some spools it may have a rough edge around here and that thread could get caught on that edge. So I'm going to push this back up and what it does is that thread is able to move around and come off of the spool very smoothly right around this end cap and that's the way that we want to see it. Now, you may uh, purchase cone thread. You do not want to put cone thread on the carrier or have it standing up like this. The reason for that is because that you're not going to get an even pull, f pull from the spool, which is also going to give you irregular thread tension. You'll need to actually purchase a cone thread stand that st sits up here on the outside of the machine. And I will, uh, I'll talk about that in just a minute. But for right now, this is the way you should be installing your thread. And if you actually have a stand like this, hopefully you can actually get that thread cap up there if the thread, uh, uh, if this post is long enough. If not, it should be okay just like this. Just make sure that the spool turns very smoothly as it comes off of the spool. You don't want any hiccups or bumps along the way. You want the thread to come off of the spool very smoothly. So I'm just going to install this one more time. Put the proper end cap on all the way. And now we'll talk about threading for, to make a bobbin. Okay, so I'm going to thread this now to prepare for making a bobbin, filling a bobbin. Now there are some things you should understand about the bobbin. First of all, you need to make sure that you're using the correct bobbin for your machine. So please watch my needle, thread, and bobbins video so you understand how to find out what is the correct bobbin. If your machine came with a few different bobbins, then take one of those to the store and measure the distance because this distance between the top and the bottom of the, the bobbin is very important for the sizing of the correct bobbin. So this here is the post that we're going to actually put the bobbin in to wind it, and this will be the mechanism that winds the bobbin. So I'm just gonna put this back on here and snap it right on there, make sure it's secure. Now I've got my thread all loaded up here, so I'm gonna um, take my thread and I'm gonna start threading the machine. And on this machine, I have a diagram which helps me visualize where I need to put the thread in. It also has over here by the bobbin winder, uh, the threading of the bobbin for accurate bobbin winding. So I'm gonna pull the thread down here and I'm gonna put it here in this carrier, make sure it snaps in there. And then up here, I need to make it go around this post here, according to the diagram. Now you'll need to look at your operation manual to find out the correct threading for this, but it should be something similar. And then I have a post here with a little disc on it, and this disc kind of moves around. But this is actually a tension disc, which actually applies tension for the bob bobbin winding itself. So if we look at the diagram, I need to wrap the thread around this post here and bring it back around the disc. And I need to make sure that thread goes underneath the disc. So sometimes you need to hold that thread and make sure it's under that di disc nice and snug, otherwise you're not gonna get a good tension. And then I can pull the thread, you can see that it fly, uh, moves through there. It's still in the carrier here, it's moving around this post here, and then it's snugly in the tension guide here. And now I'm coming up to the bobbin. Now you want to take care on the way that you put your thread onto the bobbin. You can, of course, wind your thread around like this, and hope that it just doesn't go around and round. So you just have to double check that. What this illustration on this machine is telling me to do is to actually thread the, the thread through this little tiny hole that's in this bobbin right here. So that's what I'm going to do. Find the end of my thread. I'm gonna go on the inside of that bobbin and I'm gonna thread straight through that little hole. Now, if yours doesn't have this, you may have to just wind 
the bobbin around, but make sure that you've got several rows of winding around so that it doesn't just slip. Now, what I'm going to do is I, in order to get this to work, I need to snap that bobbin against this post here. And what this does, while the bobbin is winding and fulling, filling, it actually pushes the bobbin away until the bobbin completely unclicks and that stops the bobbin from winding once it's full. So I'm gonna snap this back to this post and now it's ready to be winding. Now in this instance, I need to hold on to my thread, hold the thread away from the bobbin while it's winding. And then you could stop and snap it, but I'm just gonna let it wind all the way up so you can see the entire uh, bobbin winding process. Now I've gotta turn my machine on. So my machine is on. I should also mention when I snap this in, what it does is it actually stops the feed dogs underneath the foot which i'll talk about in just in just a minute it stops that from moving and the needle from going up and down in some very old machines um, it actually does not stop the needle um, from going so if you purchased an older machine at a yard sale or um, at a refurb center you may just want to double check that Another thing about the snapping and stopping the feed dogs and the needle is some will have a dial back here that you need to pull out or twist in order to stop the feed dogs or the needle um, from working. And I'll also discuss that once I get down to the needle. So I've got it snapped here. I'm going to actually start winding the bobbin. All I need to do is step on my presser, my, my pedal, and I will wind a bobbin. One of the things that you want to look for when you're winding the bobbin is that how even the bobbin is. And sometimes you'll need to put your finger in here and have that thread go up and down just to make sure you're getting an even filling of your bobbin. And you notice my thread just snapped off. Um, I was just pulling it kind of tautly, not tightly, and it just broke the thread. And I'm just going to make sure that I'm getting a nice even bobbin here and there's my bobbin it stopped on its own it won't go anymore you can hear it I'll press the foot pedal again it's not winding yet the machine is still trying to go that means that the bobbin is done winding and I'll take it off here I should have my snips but I'll break this off so this is a good bobbin I can, I'll clip this up a little bit better so it's not sticking out there. So this is about as full as you really want your bobbins when you wind them. The other thing that you want to check is kind of press, press your fingers in here and feel how tightly and snug that your thread has been wound. If it feels squishy, that's not a good bobbin. That means you didn't get your thread into the tension disc. We want a nice, snug, tight bobbin, all right? So now we're ready to insert this into the machine. Okay, so we're ready to install our bobbin. And this is where the bobbin goes. And there's a cover here. Now you will have to read your instruction manual. Some uh, bobbins, um, this part in the front comes off and there's a door here where you open up and insert your bobbin. Or sometimes the bobbin also is inserted here on the side. Um, but this one is what we call a drop-in bobbin. You simply just drop it in. And then there are diagrams here for you to follow. Let me um, move out a little bit so we can see this diagram here. It gives you the, the correct way and the incorrect way to insert it. So here, the bobbin, the thread should be coming out this way on this side when you drop your bobbin in it shouldn't be coming out this way. You see the difference? So the thread is coming off this way. So all I have to do is turn this bobbin over this way and it's coming out the correct way. So then there's a little diagram steps one, two, three, four, and five. So what we're gonna do once we've got this thread like this, I have to remove this cover. There's a little hinge here that you click 
and this pops up and you just take this little door off. Now this piece I want to tell you, do not lose this piece. You will not be able to sew very easy if you lose it. And this is kind of expensive to replace that just one, that one little part. So make sure that you always have that. Um, you don't lose that. So I'll just set this up here on the machine over here to the side. So I've got this bobbin in here with the thread going the correct way. I'm just going to drop it in there, make sure it goes in flat and not crooked. And then there's this little handle here and I see this drawing here that helps me and I can refer to the drawing here. The thread is coming off the right way. So all I need to do is pull that thread and this little arm here, I need to make sure that the thread goes underneath that catch arm and then I'm going to pull it like the arrow shows me to pull it up this way. Grab that thread. And if you see this part here, this kind of, I'm, I'm not sure, like iron shape piece here, and then I've got this indentation with an arrow that goes all the way around it. This is actually a thread cutter. So all I need to do is pass that thread underneath this little plastic part, pull that thread around, and then pull on it just gently and it will rip that thread right off. Now you don't have to do anything else. You're done installing the bobbin. We just need to recover the bobbin with this plastic window. Insert under this metal piece and then you want to just clip it in place. And there we've installed the bobbin. Okay, so let's install the needle now. So um, I have my needle ready to go and I'll just set that here, set that aside for right now, just this, for a minute. But I want to talk to you about where a couple things here, the needle goes up here uh, in this section, there's a hole in there that you can kind of feel. Um, and then this is the screw that you tighten to actually loosen, to remove and then tighten to put in. So it's right here. And in my machine, I, what comes with this machine is a special tool here. Now you can use a regular screwdriver because there is a slot here to put this in like that and just screw it. Um, this is a little bit wider. It's a little bit thicker than your regular screwdriver. But understand that you will only have so much of a distance between this screw and then the side of your sewing machine. So you'll have to have a short screw screwdriver. And this is probably about three inches long. Um, okay, so um, safety first, um, make sure that your machine is off, um, turned off or unplugged as well. I don't even have the foot um, pedal plugged into this machine right now because if you accidentally hit it while you're installing your needle, you could get injured. So again, this is the needle and please watch the needle uh, tutorial if you need more information about those needles. And remember, I'm using the Schmetz brand. And on home sewing machine needles, you will remember that it has this flat area here. It's a flat shank part. So this part goes toward the back, so it's going to be pointed toward the back. In fact, you probably won't be able to install it um, the other way. You might be able to shove it in there, but that's not a good idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I have that facing toward the back, and then I'm just going to try to insert it here. This is where the tweezers might come in handy, but I'm just doing this by hand. Oops, I had so if you notice here, I have the flat shank towards me. That's wrong, so I need to turn it and make sure that it might we need to unscrew this a little bit. I guess I tightened it before. And then make sure that it's all the way up there, that when you're pushing it with your fingers, it's going all the way up and you can't go anymore. So I'm gonna hold on to that and then I will tighten that up. And you want it snug, make sure that it's not too tight, that you can't, um, that it won't fall out. So you want to make sure that it's tight enough that you can actually unscrew it. Sometimes if your needle is in there for a long time, that this doesn't like to unscrew if it's too tight, but make sure it's snug, right? And then just kind of tug on the needle, make sure it's not going to be um, dropping out. 
And so that's how you install the needle. The one thing that you need to check again is that you did have the flat shank toward the back and that you can see the eye of the needle. Remember the eye is the hole right here and that you can see through it looking front to back because this is where we'll be threading, all right? So now that I know we have the needle inserted properly, um, we can actually thread the machine. Okay, so I'm going to install my thread onto the thread spindle, push that all the way back. And then, of course, using the proper end cap. And I want that to be snug. And then I'm gonna thread this in the beginning, just like we did the bobbin. I'm gonna make sure my thread comes down and I'm gonna hook it into that carrier there. And then there is a diagram on my machine. Now, some of you may have a post that sticks out with a little coil looking thing, which you'll need to put the thread in. A lot of newer machines have this little bar here that the thread needs to pass through, and that guides the thread going down into the tension discs. And I will talk about tension towards the end of this tutorial, but um, in ho most home sewing machines, now that you buy new, um, it will look similar to this. So just make sure that thread goes underneath this post and then back around and then drops through this little opening here. Okay, so now that we have that thread down here in this slot, I need to run it down and this part here, I need to run it down and around that part and then I need to bring this thread all the way back up. Okay, and I'm going to move the camera here because I want to show you something. So I apologize if it's shaky. I'm just going to move the camera in here and inside here, you can see a little metal piece and that is, it looks like a hook and it's called the take up lever. We need to take our thread and make sure we go all the way to the back and then move it over to the right and then pull that thread back toward us, guiding it right along the edge of that machine, the edge. So if I get back in there, you can see that the thread is now hooked on to that hook, and that's what we want. And now we can pass the thread all the way back down toward that needle. All right, so now we have the thread down. We have it down here. It's hanging down here at the bottom. And just above the needle, there is this little metal piece or some of your machines, it just may be a wire that is sticking out. So let's see if I can just point to it. So this piece here, there's a little space between the top here and that area. We wanna insert the thread in there. There's a, it's actually a little carrier. What this does is it actually lines up the thread with the needle. And remember in the needle tutorial, I talked there's a groove on the top of this needle. Having it in this, in this carrier aids in that thread traveling along that groove. So I'm just going to get in here and you'll probably have to use both fingers or maybe uh, some tweezers. And you're just gonna hook it in there until you see it inserted and then you can pull it and you can pull it and see that it's actually hooked in there. So now all we have to do is thread the needle right through that eye. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my snips. I'm gonna get a nice clean cut and I will get up here and I will push that thread right through that needle and you see it coming out the back. Now this would be a good time to grab your tweezers to grab it. Sometimes I'll put my finger just on the back of the needle here and I'll grab that thread. And you wanna pull it slowly. You wanna make sure that this thread doesn't wrap around the edge of that needle. You wanna make sure that it goes straight down into that eye and then pulls out toward the back. And if you've got this far, then you have successfully threaded your machine. 
OK, so let's talk about installing your uh, foot, your presser foot. This is a foot. And your machine will probably have several different types. I will go um, into those um, as we get into the exercises. So you need to read your manual for the correct, regular, basic foot for your machine. And this one, if you've bought this machine or a brother, um, newer machine, so this presser foot is J. There is a J right here in the middle of the foot in the back. I don't know if you can, there it is. Um, so this is the basic presser foot. Uh, it has a clear area here guide, and then there are some notches here, which I'll get to in just a minute um, once I get to the finer details of threading. So there's also a spring here, and that spring is actually used to go over thick thicknesses of fabrics um, that are not even with your presser foot and I'll talk about those once we get into those exercises. So there are actually two parts to this presser foot. There is a holder, a presser foot holder that is right here. My fingers are on it. I'm going to use my tool, this tool that we just used for the needle. I'm going to unscrew that so you can see what that looks like. Most newer sewing machines have clip-in presser feet like this. So this is the holder. And what happens is that there is a bar here, right here on the presser foot, and these two usually just snap in together. And so it's really easy to change out your presser feet. So to get them out, there's a little hinge here to press on the back, and it releases that. Most people just keep this part on their machine unless they're going to do something like quilting um, or um, maybe the, the buttonhole um, attachment needs to go on this whole thing. So I'm just going to install this, put this back on, and I'll show you how I install that foot. Make it sure it's nice and snug. So I've got this foot here. I'm going to line up this bar with this part here. I'm just going to line that up there and then up here, oh, you can't see where I'm going. Up, let's see, to the right. There is this lever here that's to raise and lower the presser foot. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line up my presser foot here with the clip part and I'm just going to slowly lower that in there and then I heard that snap. I know it's got the presser foot so I can lift that up and make sure that I've got all of the pieces. Now that I've got the foot on there, I should mention that that lever to raise and lower the presser foot may actually be on the very back of your machine for some of you. Um, for some of you, it may be on the side of your machine um, and things like that. Um, so just be aware of where your lever is, okay? So now that I've got the presser foot on, I've got it threaded, I'm gonna thread my thread just through my presser foot. I've got a slot here, I take that thread out. Um, and I've got my thread bobbin in as well. Okay, so there is one more thing I would like to mention about your thread and your bobbin, is that in a lot of newer machines, such as this one that I'm using, um, you it, once this is set up like we've got it here, we don't need to pull the bobbin thread through um, to bring it back up to the top. Let me remove the foot for just a second. Your bobbin thread comes out from this hole that is here. Let's see if I can get a closer view for you. Okay, so this right here, this is the area that the, the bobbin thread comes out. So on these newer machines, we don't have to worry about bringing the thread, but if you bring bringing the bobbin thread up through here to get the stitches started, because it has enough here, when we wound it here, that thread is actually gonna pull and it's got a pretty good length on it. For the older machines, you're going to need to pull that through. So if that's the case, you're going to need to use a hand wheel, your hand wheel on the side of your machine. So let me just move the camera really quick so you can see. Up here, this is the hand wheel that you would need to turn. And you will need to turn the hand wheel toward you to get the needle to go down into that hole and to pick up your bobbin thread. 
So let's have a look at that and how you should actually do that. Okay, so let me bring this up just a little bit more. I'm sorry for this getting this all set up. But this is the way it would be in a classroom environment too. Okay, so I've got my needle threaded and I've got my thread here and I want to get that uh, bobbin thread up so I know that my first st stitches are going to be good. So the way we do it, you're going to turn your hand crank, hold on to this thread. Don't pull it through, just hold on to it. Maybe just put your finger on it there. And that's so that the thread, sometimes if it's short, will actually come out of the needle because as you turn, remember that take-up lever? If the take-up lever is lower, it's actually gonna pull the thread right out of your needle. So I tend to hold it just like this. I'm going to turn, the needle goes down all the way, and then you're going to bring the needle all the way up and you see the thread move there. Don't, and then stop just as the needle is starting to go back down. And then what you can do is take the thread that you're holding and just gently pull it up and you saw the thread, the bobbin thread pop up there. It's right here. I'm gonna grab it with the tweezers and I can pull this out. I can grab that and it's not coming out with the tweezers so I'm just gonna get in there with my fingers and pull it. Got good tension on it, which we like to see. So if you don't have an electronic machine, like this is electronic, you will probably need to do this to get that bobbin thread to come out to get a good stitch at the beginning. So it's also a good idea, even if you have an electronic machine, if you find that you're having a lot of thread wadding in your bobbin in the beginning, that could be one of the reasons. So I always generally just pull the thread out anyway. Um, so it's just a good idea to have that there. So I'm going to snap my foot back on. If I can get it in the right place snap that into place okay and then I've got the presser foot lifted up and insert that thread and I've got both my threads here on the outside I'm gonna zoom out here so you can see this a little bit better okay so needle in, thread in, we're ready to sew. Okay, so there's one thing that I didn't talk about while I was threading the machine, and that's the tension. And all machines will have a dial that's similar to this, or perhaps in the front of the machine, it will have a little metal or plastic dial with numbers on it similar to this. Um, and you can dial this from zero, for me all the way up to an eight so zero or the lower numbers being um, not a lot of tension all the way up to eight or the highest number which is the most tension there is usually an area between it we see these lines that are going between three and four and four and five that is the uh, usual area amount of attention of tension rather and there's a little um, bit here that actually is where the dial is supposed to be centered on. So people that I have taught always like to mess with this tension dial. And I'm going to tell you right now that you don't really need to. Uh, for what we're doing and the exercises, unless I tell you during one of the lessons you need to move your tension dial, um, it should probably generally be in the middle. So mine goes from zero to eight. So I'm leaving mine on four. What the tension dial does is, if you remember me talking about this area of the threading, that there are tension discs. So your thread moves through, moves through two tension discs. So imagine your fingers are pinching the thread. The thread would move between your fingers and then you would adjust the tension um, between your, ten your fingers 
to how fast or slow it slides through your fingers, right? So that's the idea of the discs, and you need to make sure that your thread is through the discs. Now, there are a lot of troubleshooting areas that happen for tension, and this is usually one of those areas. Sometimes your thread doesn't get in between those tension discs, or it doesn't even get in this area at all, so you need to check that. The other thing about the tension discs is that sometimes they go bad, sometimes they break, and sometimes the spring in there breaks. So if you're consistently having bad tension, you probably need to have your machine serviced. So going back to the tension dial, if the tension, I'm putting it in the middle, then why would there be lighter tension or harder tension? So Tension has to do with a couple of things that you're sewing with. It has to do with the fabric you're using, it has to do with the needle you're using, and it has to do with the thread you're using. And of course, you'll need to go back and review the needles, threads, and bobbins, and of course the fabrics for a much longer explanation of the tension uh, for the proper usage, right, of your needles and thread. So some threads are thicker and some threads are thinner. So the thinner threads need more tension while the thicker threads need less tension, right? So um, just keep that in mind that if you're not getting a quality stitch, there's a lot um, that can be happen. But before you mess with your tension, if you're using a heavier fabric or different layers of fabric, make sure that you're using a heavier needle, a bigger needle, which would re require the use of a thicker thread. If you're using much lighter weight fabrics like a chiffon, a lightweight satin or voile, then you're going to be using a much smaller needle in which you would be using smaller, smaller diameter thread, which means you would need to actually tighten up those discs just a little bit more than you would have as per sewing with your sew all thread. So there's a lot that goes into tension and usually most of your troubleshooting doesn't come from this dial. It actually comes from the needle, the thread, and the fabric you're sewing with. But the first thing that you would wanna check per tension is that whether or not you have your thread inside your tension discs, which is here. So now we've got everything threaded and you have a little troubleshooting things, I need to talk about some things that are going on near your sewing. Okay, so let's talk about some of these markings that are on the front plates here on your machine. Here, if your machine is like mine, you have this plastic piece um, that I just mentioned briefly when we were putting the bobbin in and we use this as a thread trimmer for the bobbin. So there are some markings here. Now if you have an older machine, you may have a complete metal plate that has a lot of different measurement lines um, in it. So uh, you'll these will apply to you as well, but there's one thing that you should know um, about this machine is that the needle itself is all the way over to the left. And there are three spots that the needle can be. It can be to the left, the very middle, and then to the very right. And in a lot of today's home machines, it will actually start over to the left. Now you can make it mechanically, make it start in the center if that's easier for you. However, for any machine that automatically starts on the left, they usually go off of that needle position for all of the different measurements that are here on the throat plates. So this first line here, if you can see that, I'll tilt it a little bit, this line here lines up directly with the needle. So it's in alignment of that needle and all of the measurements on the throat plate start from that needle. So say you need a quarter inch seam, they've got a line here, that says one quarter inch. So you would line up your the edge of your fabric with the quarter inch here. If you start your needle in the middle position, then that's end, end up going, that's going to be an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So you will need to adjust your measurement for your, um, your seam allowance for wherever you position the needle. So I'll be keeping my needle here at the far left because I have measurements here. This is a quarter inch, 
And if I tilt this even more, and I'll pull, pull the, the foot off here in just a minute to show you, there are three different markings here, and each of the markings are an eighth of an inch apart. And so the far marking over here, where it's a far right needle position, would be a quarter inch, and that lines up with this marking here. So if I tilt this back a little bit further, we can see some of the markings back here, and we see this one here that says five eighths. And then there's a two and uh, a four over here. These are centimeter markings, but in America we'll be using the inches or imperial system. So let's talk about this five eighths for just a minute. So I want you to understand, as I've stated before in the other um, basic videos, that all of the patterns at Apparel Arts Academy are going to have one half inch seam allowances for the major seams, unless otherwise specified. In some cases, like around necklines or sleeveless armholes, that would be one quarter inch. But in the commercial patterns that you buy at the store, most of those patterns have a 5 8 seam allowance. But as I'm seeing more individual people selling their patterns, such as I do, uh, they're using half inch, which actually mirrors the apparel industry. And it's actually closer to the uh, metric system for their widths, um, for their basic seam allowances on wovens as well. So my patterns will not be utilizing this 5 8 mark right here. Although if you buy another commercial pattern, you must look at the instructions to find out what their 5 8 if, the, if they're using 5 8 seam allowance. Now, unfortunately, this particular machine and a lot of the companies now with the machines, they're putting the measurements for your seam allowances way back here behind your presser foot. So the only measurement I have here that tells me about seam allowances here is this one quarter inch, and then I have this diagram for the bobbin, and then here it says one. So this means that's one inch from my needle, but it doesn't give me a mark here for my five eighths. So it looks like this could be it, but I'm not really sure what that little tiny mark is. I can't, I mean, I really have to look anyway. So I have to be honest with you that I'm not really happy with what a lot of the new sewing machine companies are coming out, or the newer sewing machines rather coming out, that all of the measurements for your seam allowances are way back here after the fact that you've just sewn that seam. Your seam allowance comes from the needle. So where, from wherever that needle goes in, your seam allowance is measured from there. So you kind of need to see that or know it before you get up here into the presser foot, right? So uh, just be aware of that. You could take this and put markings here on the plastic part, but understand, remember that you need to be able to get this uh, piece off. So if you put tape all the way down here, you're gonna have to remove it every time you need to put in a new bobbin. So just be aware of that. Okay, so I've taken the presser foot off of the machine so we could talk about these little notches that I was talking about before. This one here lines up with the needle which starts out on the far left side and then this one is in the middle and this one is on the far right. Those are the three different needle positions that most um, current sewing machines have available to you and you can switch them between um, starting there or actually being there. Um, this helps when you're actually doing zippers or using the zipper foot, and once we get into those exercises, we'll be using a different foot anyway. So um, if you want to change the position of your needle, you'll need to go into your instruction booklet and read up on how to do that. So my needle starts here, and that actually lines up again with this line here. That's my actual stitch line. And then this marking is one eighth of an inch away from my needle. And then this marking on the right is one eighth of an inch from the previous mark. So if we're working with quarter inch seam allowances, this is the needle and this will be the edge of our fabric. So now I know what a quarter inch seam looks like. So conveniently, this particular uh, presser foot, which is nice, as I mentioned before about the five eight seam allowance, um, for commercial patterns. 
So now I mentioned before that Apparel Arts Academy, uh, I use half inch seam allowances. So from this first notch here, which lines up with the needle, to the edge of the presser foot is conveniently a half inch. So when we're sewing with the Apparel Arts Academy patterns, we know that the edge of our fabric can be right at the edge of our foot because that's where most of my seam allowances will be for those patterns, unless I specify. It's really only gonna be a half inch or a quarter of an inch, unless we're working with you know specialty trims, elastics, and things like that. So um, on this machine anyway, again, I would like to reiterate that your seam allowance starts from the needle. So you will need to use a ruler if you're not sure on your machine and measure from the needle over to where a half inch is and maybe put a mark on your machine or make sure that from that needle the edge of your presser foot is one half inch and that will make it a lot easier for you. So I wanna talk about these guys right here. They're called feed dogs. And be careful, I still have the needle in here, but if you don't have your needle in, you can run your finger over them, you can feel that texture. So these are actually what pull your, your fabric through the machine. This is the only part that actually is has the pull of pulling the fabric your fat so your, your fabric is not pulled from the top it's pulled from the bottom and that's why when you put your presser foot down on it we press the presser foot down and press the fabric between the presser foot and the feed dogs the feed dogs will pull all the layers of the fabric through as long as we've got good pressure from our presser foot so what happens is uh, I will hand crank so you can see these. These feed dogs actually rotate in a circular motion up and down. And you can see that the fabric, it, it's, it pulls the fabric with the feed dogs back. The needle goes down into the fabric. It picks up that bobbin thread and then the feed dogs come up, back up to the fabric. Once the needle has come back up and cleared the fabric and it pulls the fabric back your stitch length and then the needle is inserted again. And the process keeps repeating. So the only things that actually pull for the sewing are these feed dogs and they only happen on the bottom. So there's no feed dogs on the top of the presser foot. So, whoops. So, um, this is a presser foot. Everything underneath is completely flat. So, you need to have good pressure with the um, that is pressing down on the fabric, right? Otherwise, it won't be pulled through. So, that means when you put the fabric in, we'll lower the presser foot and then it will sew. And this pressure pushes down on the fabric which allows the feed dogs to pull all the layers through. So just be aware of that. Okay, so there's just one more thing I wanna discuss, and that's how you're sitting in front of your machine or at a table. First of all, your sewing machine needs to be on a very sturdy table. So the machine, once it starts sewing, depending on the weight of the machine, may cause vibration. And if your table is not really sturdy, then your table is also going to vibrate. And that won't make for very comfortable sewing. I also suggest that your table should be about the height of your elbow that you're gonna be working with. That way it'll be a little bit more comfortable and it will cause much less stress on your back and on your upper shoulders. So the other thing is, um, I'm not sitting terribly close to the table right now, and that's just so that you as the student can actually see the relationship of where I'm sitting. My body is actually centering right on this presser foot and the needle, and that's really where your body should be at. So just center your body right on where that foot is and where that needle is. And then your foot pedal also should be in relationship to where your body is sitting. So slightly off center, right underneath the machine at the table. And I have mine, I just wanna show you that I do have the foot pedal plugged in and I'm gonna put it right over here as if I were sitting straight like this. Now I'm gonna actually move my chair up 
So this would actually be a comfortable distance from the machine because I'm not over here like this and I'm not really far away like this. So I'm at a good distance. The distance from aware about my elbows are to the, the relationship of where my hands are on the sewing machine. So this is a, actually a good distance to be at. The other thing is, is in relationship to the height of your machine or table of where it's sitting, you should not be turning your head down like this or you shouldn't have to be looking up like this. So you want to have a good normal resting head and just so you can peer straight down into what you're sewing. So have a good maybe 45 degree angle into your sewing. You shouldn't be actually straining or having to look down this far, right? That will cause a lot of injuries in your neck area and in your um, shoulder area. So just be very wise about how you're sitting at the machine so that you won't have any injuries. So now as we begin to sew, I have some fabric here. And although this is not an actual exercise, I want to show you the beginnings of how you should start. So I'm going to take the fabric. I've got two layers, put it under the presser foot, between the presser foot and the feed dogs, and I'm going to lower the presser foot. Now you can of course start sewing at this point, but I like to have the needle in the down position when I start. So to me, that in reinforces the action of the bobbin below. Sometimes when you start, the thread isn't there in the bobbin. Sometimes you don't know that. And so it causes some wadding and you get off to a bad start. So I use my hand crank and I on the side of the machine and I put the needle all the way down. And that's how I start. And then I'm going to show you the other tool on your machine. There's a button for me. Some of you have a lever over to the left and that's the reverse lever. And that's how we can tack to start and stop. I'm just going to start sewing. And as for beginners, you'll have to practice to see how slow you can go and then full blast. So that will be your challenge. And there are exercises for that. So I'm going to actually take this out of the machine. Let me start another one. So now I'm going to show you the reverse button. Okay, so usually when you start a seam and stop a seam, you would tack it by doing a couple stitches forward and backwards. So I'm going to start sewing and I'm going to press this button. So I'm sewing forward and now I press the button to reverse. And now I can go forward, press the button to reverse. Now for some of you, you'll have to get used to the up and down motion if you have a lever over here on this side, or sometimes it's over up here. Just understand that you'll need to find that reverse button because in a lot of the exercises, I will say back tack to begin and back tack to end. So that means back tack and then sew your seam and back tack. And then you can take your workout. So that's about it for the home sewing machine orientation. I want to wish you much luck on your future projects and I want to thank you for choosing Apparel Arts Academy for all your sewing instruction. Okay, so we've discussed winding a bobbin, placing the bobbin into its compartment. I've talked about threading the machine and what you need to look for on threading your own machine. I've talked about installing the needle and using the proper presser foot. You have information regarding feed dogs and how they pull the fabric through the machine. And I've also discussed tension and what you should be looking for on your machine. If you are able to get your machine all threaded and got your needle installed, then you're ready to start with some of the very basic sewing exercises.